It's six miles out of the town, so we'll have to go as fast as we can for the bridge. There's a railway bridge here, a pontoon bridge here, and this is the big one here. That's our objective. So the invasion of Europe was essentially staged from Britain. Millions of troops arrived in England, and the fact that they were able to hold out when they did against Germany, essentially alone in 1941, gave the Western Allies a base of operations that, you know, had Britain fallen, uh, you know, the fate of the world and, and Europe would have been very, very different. The British and Canadians are to take the three eastern beaches. The Americans are to secure the two on the west. They were a major partner during the invasion of Normandy. They handled two beaches during the invasion. The Americans had two beaches. Uh, and along with the Canadian forces, the British kind of had this hard slog up the left side of, of Europe, you know, fighting through towards Caen, really against some of the toughest German divisions in, in Europe. Uh, and then up through Holland and into northwest Germany, we're setting a lot of our gameplay and maps in and around the kind of shattered infrastructure of this uh, apocalyptic uh, Germany. So the players are going to see some new areas and, and have some new areas to fight in uh, as they experience the, the power of the British Army. What kind of a people do they think we are? Is it possible they do not realize that we shall never cease to persevere against them until they have been taught a lesson which they and the world will never forget. I think when we looked at, at the, the makeup of the British forces and their, and their character, it was really about capturing their, their toughness. Um, you know, that you look at Winston Churchill, the, the Prime Minister at the time, and, and, and how he typified their character and the sort of bulldog and chomping down on the cigar and, you know, pictures of him with, with a Tommy gun and it sort of captured their their resolve and their bravery and their, you know, their, their sort of desire to see the war through. I mean, it was tough on them uh, incredibly, but I think that character was really uh, a big part of the sort of the overall vision for the British. So one of the things that might seem obvious to people about, about Britain is the, the, the fact that it's, it's actually comprised of a number of different, you know, nations, um, Scotland and, and Wales and, and Northern Ireland and even England itself. There's, a, there's broad areas of identifiable culture and accent and these were, these were things that we looked at as part of our casting process when we were building our unit designs and so on. We wanted, you know, a Welsh engineer because they're tough and rugged and spend their lives in the coal mines and they're, they're you know, they just don't take any crap. We wanted a, a Northern Irish commando because they're, they've got this sort of bloodthirsty twang to their accent that came across really well. You know, the Scottish sniper, a guy that, that grew up in the highlands of Scotland hunting game and, you know, becomes an, an amazing sniper. And these are sort of part of the backstories around casting, but also informs you know, how we kind of design a unit and, and the dialogue we write for it and sort of the flavor we want to deliver in, in a game. Once this lot is done, we, I'm shooting nothing larger than a rabbit or a fat grouse. So one of the things we try to do at Relic is to deliver really varied play experiences, and especially on the Company Heroes franchise. We're adding the British to the existing four armies, and now we have five really unique, really distinct armies to play. Uh, and they all feel and sound and and act differently, and they all appeal to, to maybe different kinds of players, but you know, the, the breadth of, of the experience really gives us this World War II platform that we've been striving for.